we have all three levels, we wanted to make sure that we were well represented. So what does the SAC do? The SAC discusses results of state testing, um, the school performance framework, which is one of the data platforms that Dr. Johnson presents every year. Usually we do it in September. If you haven't joined us um, in previous years, you should join us next year. It's really informative to see where our school was, where we're going, and where we're headed to. And then we use that information to to, to dive into the Unified Improvement Plan. And that's going to be us identifying where our strengths and weaknesses are, and then doing the recommendations um, to better our school and then get better performing in that area. We also advise on the school budget and staffing needs. We have a couple of parent, I'm sorry, we have a couple of teacher representatives on our board as well. Um, Mr. Callahan is our elementary representative, and Ms. Abby Kaplan is our secondary representative. So they report back on the school culture and teachers and students and, and that sort. I'm gonna hand it over to Ish, if you'd like to speak along our parent survey. That is one of our other uh, responsibilities, and she's just gonna speak a little bit to that area. So every year, um, STEM does a parent satisfaction survey. If you guys have not done it before, please do it the next time it comes around because that data is invaluable for us to see what the parent community needs from, uh, from um, STEM and uh, SAC can help um, hold the school accountable for that. So please make sure to do the parent survey. Um, this year we did our parent survey. Dr. Johnson had um, presented the data at um, a previous board meeting and um, basically we try to do the longitudinal um, data collection to make sure that we're asking the right questions and um, as members of the staff we are trying to develop a subcommittee that will be um, bettering our parent survey so we can find the targets and goals that we need to meet and um, we are thinking of doing two of them, uh, one that is going to be um, mid-year and one at the end of the year so that we have more collection and uh, we can keep up to date with parent issues and community issues um, so that we can keep, keep improving. Thank you. So one of the other things that we do is we um, work closely with the PTO as well. We have a PTO representative on our board. Um, Eliza Bautista, not here this evening. Um, so she will often bring PTO needs and wants and me to bring to the PTO things that we are asking for help um, that we're seeing need, needed in the school. And then the board of directors, we have a representative from our SAC that attends every single board meeting and then we bring back a report to every SAC meeting. So if you're not able to make a board meeting, I recommend that you make a SAC meeting and you can probably find out what's going on around the school. And then we also have our DAC representative, which is Tom. Tom is also one of our board members, uh, but he goes to every DAC meeting and comes back with a very in-depth report. So if you're not able to do any of the DAC reports, the SAC uh, is a good place to hear what's going on in the district. Uh, we report back to the DAC with spending the district's, around spending the district's money, charter applications, renewals, and the school improvement plan. Does anyone have anything to add? <laughs> so the SAC typically meets the third Wednesday of the month in the high school common from <coughs> six to eight. Again, we encourage anyone to participate. Um, I think it's a great forum. We have a little bit of uh, open um, parent communication. Uh, so the, if you've ever been to one of the, the board meetings, um, you have your moment to speak. We have the same kind of structure, uh, but there's a little bit more interaction. We want to hear from our parents. We want to get them involved. We want people to understand what SAC is because we'll need more people for future years. Uh, right now, we some of us are into our second year, so we'll be needing potential replacements. Um, but that will come down in April. We'll have that uh, posted if we'll be needing some more voting members. We recently made some changes to the SAC website thanks to Nicole. She's been amazing. 
Uh, she's been working with us. There's small changes, but we are trying to be better communicating uh, the information to the parents. Um, we're talking about putting the parent survey on the website, so we'll have several years of parent surveys. Uh, it'll be a summarization, but available to all of our parents. Um, we've also kind of broken out our minutes and our agendas. The board has initiated uh, a report, so for every SAC meeting that we have, we have to generate a report to present to the board of directors prior to their meeting. And now we're talking about possibly posting that on our website so you have a good rundown of what we talked about and not having to wait for those voted minutes the following meeting. The SAC meeting agendas, we're trying to get them posted to the site prior to the meetings. I know that's been a, a tough go, but we're getting there. Um, and then you can click on that and see what our meeting's going to be about prior to the meeting. We also have, if you wanted to visit our website we, or just email us, you can join our, we've composed a parent information email service. So basically you just send me your email, send us your email, and we'll send out any kind of meeting information that we have. Um, I think I've sent out some training. I've sent some other things out to anyone that has signed up. But just email the SAC, so it's SAC at stemk12.org and just say you want to be added to the reminder email list and then I just throw something out at least once a month. So our next staff meeting is on November 20th from 6 to 8, again, in the high school commons. Uh, and then you'll want to enter through the high school entrance. And our new tagline is going to be, to know your school is to love your school. And I promise, if you join SAC, if you come, you will start to love, you will love your school because you'll know your school. It's all about knowing the information, I promise. Anything else? That is your sack. <laughs> Thank you very much. Susan? Hi, I'm Susan Montgomery, and I am the co-president of PTO. Unfortunately, Eliza could not be here this evening, but I am joined by Bernadette Amaya. She is a member at large. So I just want to first let you all know um, we have 11 board members, and they're all volunteers, of course. And anyone is welcome to join the PTO. It can be any parent, anyone that works here at the school. And we would love to have more attendance from all of you guys. Um, we have a really great group of volunteers. We try to make it fun at the same time. Um, and just so you know, membership is always free to the PTO. I know PTA, I think, runs a little bit differently, but PTO is free membership. So I'll let Bernadette explain more about events and fundraising, kind of what we do from meeting to meeting. So, um, we obviously have events throughout the whole entire year, which includes um, a few events throughout the summer, um, which is for our volunteers as well as the parent and student community. Um, as you can see, some of the ones that have already occurred have been blast off in the front run. And we just um, implemented the Clue Conundrum, which is for the middle school and high school. Um, and as far as I know, it went over really well. We got um, good feedback from both the teachers and the students that um, they liked it. It's during advisement period, um, during the school years, or during the school day. So it was something that was really um, easy to fit in within a schedule for um, all the middle school and high school students. Um, the next um, event is going to be at Skate City, and this one is um, a family event. Um, so we're encouraging all family members to go um, to the event. It is not a bus event, correct? And um, we're trying it this way because um, it's also part of giving back to the teachers. So class participation is important. If the class, um, with the most participation, the teacher receives $100. 
Um, so really, you know, put that out there and take a look at the flyer that is posted, um, I believe, obviously on the PTO website, but also um, within the newsletter. So get that out there. It's, a, um, it's fun. It's a nice event to be able to go and um, make money for your school without having to do anything. Um, the next ones, obviously, throughout the winter, some things are happening, some aren't. It just depends on, um, you know, the amount of participation that we receive from parent volunteers. Obviously, everything that we do is based on parent volunteers, so the more volunteers we can get to help us, the more events we will be able to um, have, and the better the events um, they can be. But it also includes, um, for my part, as a member at large, I do a lot of teacher appreciation, staff appreciation, um, not events, but um, I we give don't or bagels to them on a couple every other week. I try to do fun Fridays, so the more people I can help with those types of things, the better they can be. Right now, they're pretty basic of we're just coming in, handing things out, and then we kind of walk away. It would be fun to um, do a little bit more with them, so we're always looking for anybody who can help with any of that stuff. Um, and in the spring, um, some of the typical things that we do is the STEM up to middle school for our fifth graders, and um, we do help with um, will be helping with after prom, apparently. <laughs> and then, of course, um, the event at Boondocks, which is always a fun one to do. And I don't know. All right, and then typically um, fundraisers that we have throughout the year, um, obviously the one of the bigger ones is STEM Gives. Um, and then, of course, we have different um, restaurant nights, club fundraisers, um, obviously the different events that I um, talked about, and then um, the retail reward program, which, um, like with King Super's cards and um, the milk caps for moolahs, bringing those in, your box tops for education, and of course, all the restaurant nights. Um, we want to point out that we do have um, companies that we do work with um, via Starbucks is fantastic so even though some people don't like to go to Starbucks believe me they help us a lot with a lot of free coffee for our staff and teachers and they really appreciate it um, we have a little tent Adventist hospital that we're going to be working with this year um, Stars of Hope we worked with over the summer. Um, if any of you came to Blast Off, um, it was, it's just a, um, not just, but a, just a, rec we see you, we recognize you, and type of event that a wonderful lady puts on. And then of course, Project Peace is another um, um, company that does um, events as well to show support. Well, grants that we have um, had from spring up into the fall. As you can see, there are several school improvements um, with water stations, the TVs. The TVs are coming. They are um, just some technical stuff of where they're going, how they're being placed, and everything like that. So um, those are coming soon. I know that much. <laughs> um, the middle school commons, if anybody's walked through, we ended up granting um, money for the furniture that's in there that gives, you know, the students places to hang out and to um, just do homework or whatever it is that they choose to use it from. Um, the entry rugs, the play field, um, we granted 5825 to. Um, and teacher, staff, and classroom support, we granted um, 30 keyboard laptops for the music room of 370. You can see the new teacher grants of 1500, which um, is all the incoming new teachers. We are splitting up $1,500 between all of them. If you want to know more information about that, please um, shoot us an email. Um, we went through and granted 2000 for um, the teacher lounges. If you haven't had a chance and you can, 
take a look at them, they actually look really great because we did part of that. So we're very happy with how they're turning out. Um, and then a career development of $998. So we granted $27,765 within the last, yeah, so far, because the new grant cycles are coming up. Um, as you can see, so total grants funded has been $52,155. Um, and if you have any additional inf or questions about any of that grant money and where it went to and how we um, come up with that or how we process those, uh, come to a PTO meeting. Oh, these ones are, oh, okay, sorry. So these ones are specifically, um, are granted in May and it happened. Oh, okay. It, this specific screen, sorry, is specifically for the events that happened on May 7th. They were um, gift cards for the teachers, um, of course the STEM Strong t-shirts, and then um, some really cool care binders um, that we granted. So our um, grant cycle, we try to have three times during the year. <coughs> Obviously we did a spring. Our fall is coming up November 13th. That's our next meeting. And then we'll do a spring grant cycle um, April 8th. And then do you want to talk about cool things? That's hospitality. Okay, the cool things are hospitality, which is what I do, which is what I love to do, and it's giving back to the teachers and the staff, um, and also helping, um, trying to get to help other organizations to um, help the students with the events that they have to. Um, so we work on the back to school decorations, um, the kindergarten first day, um, we have decorations and supplies for the staff bathrooms and the staff lounges, which we try to keep um, just different things that they need, snacks, coffee, tea, all of that stuff is what runs through the hospitality committee. Um, we provide um, breakfast for professional development days. The next one is Friday, but um, FRC is taking care of that, yay. And, um, for parent-teacher conferences, we do um, a breakfast and a dinner, um, just depending on how those days fall. And then we are in, I'm trying something different this year with the appreciation weeks because I feel it's important to recognize all staff, obviously. In the spring, it's typically called Teacher Appreciation Week, and obviously it's not just teachers, it's the entire um, staff that we have here at all three schools. So I'm trying to implement staff appreciation weeks or days throughout the year, and then of course having the week-long teacher appreciation week in May. Um, so that may come out looking a little bit different when we post um, things, and that's the reason why is because taking on um, almost 200 staff in one week um, is a bit much where if I can spread it out throughout the year that makes it a little bit easier to get donations and to um, show appreciation for everybody and also to single out those groups which is really nice instead of just lumping everybody into you know one group and um, we usually provide senior graduation signs that's about it so um, here's some other thing. I'm not going through all of these, but um, if you are interested at all or know of anybody who's interested in working with hospitality, we actually are looking for another um, member at large. So if you want to have fun providing things for teachers and staff, then this is definitely what you want to do. And it is really nice and um, it just, it's great, obviously, to give back to those who are taking care of our children. Okay, so the most important thing is how to get involved with PTO. We, as you can see, we have a lot of different events and fundraising. There's things you can do at home. And we're happy to talk to anybody, 
even if you can just, you know, share an hour of your time, even once a month, that would help all of us. So just reach out to the PTO. Here's our website, which you can reach through the STEM normal website. It's always updated with events we have going on, fundraisers we're doing, and all of our financial information. We meet mostly the second Wednesdays at 6.30 during the school year in the middle school cafeteria, with the exception of our next meeting, which will begin at 5.30 to 7, because we have asked all of the staff and teachers that would like to do grant requests come that night, and we tried to move it a little bit earlier just for them, because they're here all day long anyway. Um, but we would love to see a lot of you there. It's November 13th, 5.30 to 7. <coughs> and back to Leanne. Thank you so much to our PTO and our SAC. They really make our worlds go round, so thank you. Thank you for that. So now is the time that we can take some questions. And uh, Nicole has the microphone. Does anybody have a question for STEM staff or administration? First, I want to say thank you for putting on this event. I know it's typically a spring event, but I definitely appreciate you putting it on in the fall this year. So thank you for pulling everybody together. I hope there's a lot more people online who will be able to see the recording. Uh, my question relates to the 40% ethnic diversity numbers that you had up there earlier and how STEM is reaching out to those parent populations to make sure they understand what's going on at the school and also to get their support for PTO or SAC. Um, what are you guys doing for that? Sure, um, I think that's a great question. We want all of our and all of our organizations to be representative of our population. So I know I can speak for SAC. Um, we have um, reached out to the community and are um, really uh, taking a look at how our SAC team can represent our population um, purposefully. I don't know if you want to address that as well because that was one of our goals. So, I don't know if we... So when we talk about ethnic diversity, you're talking about culturally, I'm assuming. We, we've reached out on grade level um, so far, but we had, ex we, when we do our, um, we actually only did really one election last year, was our first election. Um, so we hope to get out to more of the parents through the staff meetings. So just.